what's up y'all and thanks for stopping by the Surge T channel. I am Surge T and in this video I will be doing my rundown and thoughts for Raw for the August 16th 2021 edition. Orton opened up Raw. Then Riddle comes out and tells him hey I know why you hit me with the RKO. It's because you're trying to show me how to do it. Because I've been doing it before. When y'all you were gone, I was doing the RKO. And I guess that was his reasoning. So no hard feelings done on his part. He knew that he feels that Randy Orton hit him with the RKO because he's trying to show him how to do it the correct way. Only in Riddle's head. And then Styles comes out. Says, how about RK no after you know Riddle wanted, you know. You pretty much get back together as RKO, rated RKO, or RK bro, I should say. And um, Styles says that uh, tonight uh, Omos will have it easy against uh, the Viper. And Styles says, hey, how about you and I, Riddle? How about you and I go at it? So, Riddle's, so Riddle and Styles do go at it for the first match. And the end result is, well... Thing about it though is that Riddle gets distracted by Omos. Omos is just standing outside, standing there as he's about to do the floating bro. I guess he's he I guess it's a distraction because he's he's an intimidating guy. Of course you get distracted seeing him, but why does that keep you from? It always happens. It stops you from doing your move. Just do your move. What's Omos gonna do? Reach in there and grab you? But then what happens? He then he didn't he got that slight hesitation. He goes for it. What happens? AJ Styles catches him, and then hits the um, transitions into the uh, Styles Clash, and that's it. One, two, three, and Riddle loses to AJ Styles. But we still have that match with Almas and Randy Orton later on tonight. And uh, let's talk about uh, Nikki Cross. Nikki came out to crickets she was in the middle of the ring doing the superhero almost superhero pose and it looks like people were actually sitting on their hands some were standing if it's possible if it's, if it's a possibility that you can sit on your hands while you stand because no one really was reacting you know and then we find out her match i mean she just came out you don't know who her opponent is oh wh why do we have to sit back and guess it's Rip, Rhea Ripley. Again. Rhea Ripley again. I mean, I know the match uh, last week was disrupted by Charlotte. But Raw still can't book different week to week. You know, it's like, much like the, the the later match that's going to be happening. McIntyre versus Veer and Shanky. It didn't la happen last week, but they're rebooking that again. Now, let's talk about uh, the fact that when you keep putting... Rhea Ripley against Nikki Cross. Nikki Cross against Charlotte. Charlotte against Rhea. Five days to go. And there's Rip there and they're still booking these ladies to face each other. I'm telling you, it's going to take away from the match. The spontaneity, the excitement of the match at SummerSlam when you keep seeing them wrestle. You know, each other. How about you have someone else come out? Uh, have, have, have them wrestle somebody at somebody, and then Rhea can come in and interfere. Charlotte can come in and interfere. Nikki can come in and interfere. And I'm telling you, like, those two were introduced and then Charlotte came out. The queen of handouts came out. And uh, I'm going to see it on commentary. And I, and I tell you, some, how these idiots explain, because I've always been wondering, what does Charlotte being the opportunity mean? Charlotte, in her... You know, in her, what do you call it, in her own wisdom, I guess. She says that, well, I'm the opportunity for Nikki Cross when she crashed into Money in the Bank. She cashed it in on me. I was the opportunity and she became WWE Women's Raw Women's Champion. Uh, no, you weren't the opportunity. You were the loser. You were the idiot that allowed somebody to cash in on you. That's not an opportunity. Yeah, you are the opportunity because you're the champion. But... You know, how does that explain you being the opportunity? Still doesn't make any sense when you say you're the opportunity. You know, but I, I don't know. 
That's her explanation. But then this match, uh, we see uh, Rhea, she hits the Riptide on Nikki, pinning her. And then she makes the champ look irrelevant. And it's sad because Nikki deserves more than this. She knows needs to look strong going into SummerSlam. But the, for, forget that. Now, Jinder Mahal talking to uh, his boys there. Rhea and Shanky saying that this is the last chance. You know? And yeah, hopefully it is going to be their last time uh, facing each other because this feud is staler than stale bread. And that's really stale. You know? And uh, this match... The stipulation is that if uh, uh, Drew loses, Beer and Shanky can be at his at uh, Ginger's, uh, you know, at his uh, what do you call it, at his uh, side, right, his ring side, and then if uh, Drew wins, he brings he brings Angela with him, Angela, you know, the name of his sword, yeah, you know, and I'm going, it's like. You can, yeah, you can bring your sword. I guess it, it causes fear. It's like a fear factor. Yeah, you know, you can, you know, but it's like you can't use it. You know, you end up killing somebody or you end up dismembering somebody with it. At least with Veer and Shanky, he can use them. One will distract the referee while the other one can beat on uh, Drew McIntyre and give gender the, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> you know, the advantage. But, uh, you know, in the end, uh, you know, Drew McIntyre. How, what else do you expect to happen in this match? He ends up uh, connecting with a with a uh, Claymore on Shanky, and he pins him. Did anyone guess any differently? And then here comes, uh, uh, you know, Drew McIntyre. By a show of hands, who thinks Ginger's going to win? You know, crowd booing. Who thinks Drew's going to win? Everybody's winning. I go, why didn't he ask, who among here still gives a shit about this um, rivalry? I'd like to hear. I would like to. I would like to him hear him ask that question. I bet the majority of people there are going to say, uh, "No, you don't." They like Drew. I like Drew, but him and Mackin, him and uh, Jinder Mahal, I don't know. It's it's the, that 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 rivalry is uh, pretty much dead in the water now, and Drew needs to move on. But now, this thing, my fucking holy hell, tag team match. Okay? Charlotte wanted a piece of Rhea and wanted a piece of Dicky because they got the better of her and they beat on her throughout the ring and everything like that. She wants some payback. But Anna Pierce and Sonya Bill said, uh, you can either wait till Sunday or wait till Saturday, I should say, five days to get your hands on them or you can, you can have a tag team match and you pick your opponent. Tag team match. Single smash didn't go, you know, the way it should. And then, oh okay, yeah, let's, let's, bring, let's do it a tag team. I just love those. I mean, Raw hasn't done that for a while, but boy, were they weren't they guilty of that, right? They were so guilty of that. Every time a one-on-one -on -one match didn't go went awry because other people came and interfered, it turns into a uh, a tag team match. I remember one time it was a singles match, then it was a tag team match, and then it was a triple threat match. I think it was when uh, Zelina Vega was uh, managing uh, Andrade and Angel Garza. I remember that, and it was like that. It was just like. It was during the pandemic era too, and it was just so out of like, it was almost it was just them to almost the whole show. It was them. That's when they were pushing Zelina and pushing uh, Andrade and uh, Angel Garza, and uh, that thing was just crazy. But anyway, anyway, we're gonna see who's uh, who, who's gonna be uh, her partner. If Charlotte can get a partner. Now, I can't believe I'm saying this. I'm gonna say this. Moist TV. What the fuck the fuck is that? I get it. I know what it is. But man, I couldn't fast forward fast enough. I didn't even know what the gist of, of the whole show was. And, you know, unfortunately, I'm going to have to talk about that a little bit later. But let's let's move on. Elias versus Guitar. A new gimmick is, re is being rumored. And who cares? Will he be pushed after he gets the gimmick? He already bumbled and fumbled his, uh, his uh, WWE... Uh, uh, Walk with Elias, that was a good gimmick. Everybody was down for it. What did WWE do? Nothing. Now, Priest goes against the supposed Gimp Miz. And Morrison, we see him during their match. Now, this was after Moist TV. I can't believe I'm saying that. Moist TV. And then Morrison uh, brought up, uh, I found out later on during the, the, the show, that he brought up that you, you were faking all along and... How come you didn't tell me I'm your friend? I thought there was going to be a breakup and all that stuff. But it ends up being Priest versus uh, Miz. 
Morrison walks away with the drip stick because he wanted the drip stick, Miz. And it looks like there's dissension brewing, but in order to kind of stick it to his opponent at SummerSlam, Priest hits the bro kick because he's challenging Sheamus for the US, U.S. title at SummerSlam, and he beats the Miz. Miz eats another loss. This guy is has his own show. He's 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 he's, he's you know they're using him a lot on the on the mic and promos and all that stuff. But boy, does he lose a lot, doesn't he? And a side note, Sheamus. Was he trying to be a oversized leprechaun? Because he kept saying "me gold," it's me gold, you know, like like the leprechaun that horror movie, you know, that horror movie. You know what I mean? He should have talked that that, that voice. Oh yeah, I want me gold. You know, he should just he should have said it like that. Because it was like he was saying it. And I'm going, man, are you trying to be an oversized leprechaun, Seamus? <laughs> but now, even Maria P uh, Piper Niven, like I said, I will never say her name. Piper's uh. Name on the, what do you call it on the main roster. It's like Voldemort, the name that will never be saying, never, never be said. Now, Eva wants to blame Piper for her loss, you know, for you know, you know. But then again, it's like, doesn't uh, Piper Niven? Doesn't she have a better win loss record than you, Miss Overrated, or should I say, non rated? Now, just when I thought Miz and Morrison were gonna implode backstage, because they kind of got heated. And then they turned around and said, hey, everything's okay, they're friends again, and then they were cringe and awful again. Man, I wish I had forward that part, because I was thinking, okay, we're going to see something, because Morrison looks serious, and stuff like that, and I think he could really be something if he just loses the Miz, but there's people that actually like these guys because of how they are together, and I gotta admit that they do have a chemistry together, but it doesn't mean that it's a great chemistry. You know, they, just, they, they can work together, they've worked together before, so why not put them back together? But man, how about Alexa and uh, Lily? You know, they put fear in Piper. Piper was sent by Eva Marie to get the uh, Lily doll. All of a sudden, she looks at the doll. And I think I guess the doll, uh, you know, winked at her and made her um, go into a trance. And so she came. She kind of went to, uh, uh, you know, Eva Marie later on, uh, empty-handed. Silliness. The gimmicks on uh, Raw. I mean, you know what I mean? It, it gets better, folks. It gets better. Now, Mansoor goes against uh, Connor. Where's that Victor? Oh, that's right. I'm, I keep thinking that I'm watching The Ascension, but I'm not. It's actually Mace that's going to go one-on-one -on -one with Mansoor. And then Mansoor, he gets the victory because Mace goes to pin him. And then Mustafa Ali kicks him, kicks his own partner or his friend. But it's only the intention was to make him roll over so that he could be pinning Mace and he pins Mace and he gets the victory. Now, this is something that was said, and I don't know what is up his ass. I don't know what is causing him to say stuff that's so inane, because he pretty much does it every week. And I'm talking about uh, Corey Graves. He said this about Orton: in his entire career, Orton has never had to contend with anybody, anyone, more physically imposing than Omos. Really, Graves? Um, let's see, Big Show, Mark Henry, I believe even the great Kali, you know, I think he even wrestled, uh, definitely, I'm sure he wrestled, uh, Kevin Nash, Kevin Nash is seven feet, I mean, Graves really needs to stop coming off like the clueless know-nothing that he is, you know, when it comes to wrestlers and their history, Randy Orton's been in WWE for nearly 20 years now. Made his debut in 20, 2002. It's 2021 now. He's almost at 20 years, right? I don't know. I think he's wrestled some big guys, even as big as Omos. I know they're trying to push the guy. They're trying to push the young guy. He's only he's young. I think he's only like 24 years old. He's very young. So they're trying to push him. That's good. But uh, stop acting like he's the only big guy that he's ever faced. Randy Orton has been wrestling almost 20 years. It's not like he's only been wrestling five years. You know, he's been around, you know, the block, if you will. So, you know, stop with that shit. Now, he's in a match, of course, with uh, Omas. But during the course of the match, Styles gets caught kicking Orton in the gut. Orton was uh, doubled over. He was on his hands and knees. And the referee saw him and called the match and gets a, D, does a DQ victory for the Viper. 
And then Riddle comes down, takes out Styles. He angers Omos. And uh, that's that. Omos carried uh, him out because he couldn't get up. He was selling it really good, uh, Orton. I mean, uh, Styles. I don't know if uh, when he got tossed out, did he really get hurt? Because he, he sold it pretty good. But uh, we find out that uh, Riddle actually earned uh, Orton's respect. Because you're asking the question, did he? Well, yes, he did. And it's happening, folks. The RK Bro is back. And at SummerSlam, they challenge. Well, they set out the challenge for the Raw Tag Team titles. The champs didn't accept yet. But later on in the, in the evening, you know, the match was, was set. So it's official for SummerSlam. The Raw Tag Team titles are on the line. Karrion Cross and Jeff Hardy. Is there going to be a rubber match? Uh, of course there will be. A rematch? No. They said it was a rematch. No, it wasn't. Because it's they had, he did have a match of peace. I guess, uh, you know, what I call it, he had a beef. You know, Jeff had, Hardy had a beef. He didn't like how how the match ended last week. And all I got to say is that, uh, yeah, after this rubber match, man, this better be the last time these two face each other. And in the ring, Jeff Hardy again jobbed out. Not even, I don't know, how many minutes? A couple minutes? And then the crash, crush jacket is slapped on quick. And then Hardy was put to sleep. I mean, put to sleep. He was out. He tried, he, he, he fought, but he couldn't tap past enough. And, uh, we're talking about the whole thing with uh, Lily. Piper was supposed to get her, right? Eva slaps her twice. Just trying to slap her out of it. And all I kept thinking is, beat her ass, Piper. You know, and even Marie just walks away. And I'm like, damn. Maybe next week, you know. Or I'm thinking, okay, tonight, uh, the, 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 the evening isn't over yet. And then I, as, a, as the evening went on, I, uh, yeah, they're, you know, they're not showing them ever again. So I guess that was the last thing. So hopefully down the road, a few weeks from now, maybe after, after SummerSlam, maybe after SummerSlam, because Eva Marie has a match with, Alexa, maybe that's when Piper is going to, you know, turn on her, and it's, it's going to make me happy because then their feud can start, then it can end, and then have Piper Niven go off and do her own thing, and maybe give her her name Piper Niven back, and not that other dumb name that she has right now. I'm just saying. Now, Reggie goes back to his roots. He goes back to the park where he first learned how to do backflip. And, of course, there's no rest for the weary when it comes to being 24-7 champion, right? In comes our truth In the ghillie suit. That's what it looked like he had on. He avoids him, and then he avoids Tozawa, and he side flips over his car like he side flips into the ring. Gets into his car, he drives off. He says, this is easy. Piece of cake. Drives off. And I'm thinking, again, truth and Tozawa. Uh, no one else is available, WWE. I mean, what a very, very, what a strong division you have. Two guys. I mean, I'm used to seeing the same guys, but there's like, at least there's like five or six or maybe seven guys. And I know there's Lucha House Party and there's Drew Golak and, you know, even Humberto Carrillo when he's not, um, you know, you know when, he's not, when he's not being a transitional challenger for the U.S. title. But they weren't even there. So I don't, I don't understand it. Like, you know, there's a lot of people on the, on the shelf. You know, a lot of people not on the shelf, but a lot of people on the bench. How about you bring them in? How about you have them show up sometimes and give uh, our truth and uh, Tozawa a rest sometimes? Now, the tag match is on. It's Ripley and uh, Nikki Cross or Nikki Ash or Nikki A.S.H. versus Charlotte. And we find out uh, Nia Jax and uh, that's her partner and why not, right? But in the end, we see a natural selection and Charlotte pins Ripley and not... Uh, to the delight of uh, Nia Jax because uh, Nia Jax was looking at her like, you know, like, really? And she was taking all the adulation, you know, Charlotte. We even seen uh, Shayna Baszler backstage looking on in the monitor. I know she's wondering, you know, what's going on. I thought they had a, 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 a you know, a falling out. It, it didn't, it's not what, the kind of the impression we got last time, last time we saw those guys in the ring. Uh -huh. Now, Goldberg comes out. And folks, don't mistake the Goldberg chants. You know, for people being hyped that he's there. Because no one's hyped that Goldberg's there. These sheep love to chant anything. Anything. They were doing the what chants ad nauseum tonight. And then I'm thinking, you know, what more famous uh, chant is there about Goldberg, right? 
I gotta admit, if I'm there, I'll probably be chanting too. But not because I like Goldberg, but it's just because, hey, everybody's doing it, I'll do it too. But I'll do it in such an obnoxious way that, you know, I'll probably be annoying the people that are sitting next to me. But uh, it's funny because uh, no one's clapping, chanting, or jumping up and down. And I even see some empty seats in the arena. That's not good. Up front, a few, few rows back, you can see. And think about it, those Gage even had uh, more of a pop. Goldberg's son had more of a pop. And uh, we all know that the reason why uh, Goldberg came out of retirement is because of his son. His son was 10 years old at the time. He's now 15. How, my, my how time has flying, flown, right? I didn't even realize it was that, you know, that, you know, that far back, you know, five years. And then he's about to bring him in. I think he's about to bring him in to the ring, and then the almighty champ comes out with MVP, who starts to run down the challenger. And then Lashley confronts Goldberg and gave him an out. He says, I want, I gave you an out. Like, so you didn't get embarrassed at SummerSlam. Don't show up. You know. And then he says everything he says that he's going to do, and then Goldberg looks at him and says, that's bullshit. Nice language for the kids in the audience there, Goldberg. And I'm pretty sure they're going to uh, mute it on uh, WWE.com. Uh, I mean, not WWE.com, but uh, on uh, YouTube, the YouTube channel. They usually do that. They usually do. But they allow it on uh, on, uh, on uh, TV. I mean, on uh, Raw and on SmackDown, you know. But, uh, you know. And then uh, it gets heated. And then we see Lashley miss a clothesline. And then Goldberg hits him with pretty much the worst you know, slow motion spear that I've ever seen. It's like he was putting it, uh, you know, Lashley to bed, down to, down, down, down for his for his nap or down to sleep, like a parent. When a parent puts your your child down, they do it all so lovingly and very very carefully. And you could tell that it wasn't really an, an impressive thing. Cause why why did um, Lashley get up right away, as Goldberg and his sons going up the rampway? He's all, he's, he's like getting up like this, almost as if he's saying, that one's shit. Your spear, your spear sucks. You know? But let's see what happens is if it's Goldberg is going to win the title. This is the only title that he's not won, the major world title in WWE. He won the big gold belt. He won uh, the world heavyweight title. He won the universal title. He's never won the WWE title. So we'll see what happens when uh, they face each other at SummerSlam. And if they're going to drop the title to him, who knows? We may see. But I hope that Goldberg doesn't do that because he needs to show his son what a proper way of handling business, meaning you put someone over or you make someone look strong. He doesn't need the belt. You know, He's a part-timer that nobody really wants to see. And that fact that he comes back and he only comes back for title matches, you know? I mean, even Goldberg, I mean, not Goldberg, even Brock Lesnar, at least what he did, right? At least when he came back, he would have rivalry sometimes and not have the championship right away, you know? But uh, whatever, more power to him. That's his contract. Two matches a year, you know, whatever, you know? <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, that's my uh, video for uh, Monday Night Raw. Wasn't, as, wasn't better than last week. Wasn't better than, you know, the week before. But then again, at least it's consistent. Consist consistently, uh, Doing the same matches every week, pretty much the same booking, the same promos, Miss TV, uh, handicap matches, uh, a, a singles match that turns into a tag team title match. I mean, tag team match, same thing. Three hours, you know, of course, you know, we know what happens. You, you put a lot of filler, and what happens when you put a lot of filler, that's it, it just sucks, you know, it just totally sucks the, the life out of it and really doesn't make for a great programming when you have to sit through three hours of wrestling but uh, anyway that's my video so for those of you stop by and uh, check it out i appreciate it and in closing as always take care